Hi there. Not another decade update. Um, I will do that. Um, I don't know when. Maybe the upcoming week. Maybe next weekend. But, um, so far, uh, I'm not feeling too really like 100%. Uh, got a bad cold. It's getting a little better now. It was pretty bad this morning. Um, so uh, I decided to do something else. The, the, the Moog update that I once promised in one of my updates. These are all Moog albums. They're not albums featuring just a Moog sound somewhere. So no else. Emerson Lake Palmer. Um, no Yes. No other stuff like that. This is basic Moog, Moog music. <coughs> So let's uh, let's get going. First up, <coughs> sorry. First up, Blues Hot, the Electric Lucifer Book Two, um, concept album where he tells the story of uh, the devil tempting Jesus. I don't know if it's a demonic album or aimed towards you know the non-religious people or the religious people. Because if you look at the artwork surrounding right there. They're all monsters and demons and crazy things. Uh, Brook uh, Hawk, sorry, is a uh, uh, blues hot. is a pretty uh, respected man in the whole MOOC community, MOOC world. Uh, this is a lo-fi release. I, I like it. It's pretty dark and it's pretty weird. This is a re-release, uh, maybe even an original release, I don't know. I don't know if this was released before. Anyway, this is on QDK Records, which is a uh, German uh, German label. Pretty good stuff. Then one of the most well-known persons in Luke uh, history, Walter Carlos. Um, this is not his best-known album, which is switched on Bach. This is a well-tempered synthesizer, where he does similar things, uh, again, uh, focusing on, on reworking classical music, this time by, again, Bach, Monteverdi, Handel, Scarlatti. Not a big fan of classical music, but I like the way this get, you know, gets delivered. The, the mood sound just works for me very well, I like it. But it's not a record I put on that often. Um, this is pretty, you know... It's still pretty hard music to listen to classical music, even even in a Moog version. So that's Walter, and another Walter. There we go. Switch on Bach too. Album artwork, awesome. Just look at Bach floating in space, only attached to a Moog machine. Classic. Um, like the previous album I showed. It's an album I don't put on that often, but it's really nice. I like it. Um, little side story, I guess most people know it, but those who don't. Um, Walter did also the music for the 2001 Space Odyssey. Then uh, later in uh, history, late, later in time, he decided, you know, I don't feel comfortable no, in my body. Let's let's get a sex change. I don't think he. I don't know if he did like that must have gone years over it, but, you know, he became a she, so Walter became Wendy, Wendy Carlos, and as Wendy Carlos, she uh, created the mu some of the music for The Shining, it's pretty, uh, pretty cool, cool music. Another classical album, and one I showed in a previous update, it's everything I always wanted to hear on the MOOC, but were afraid to ask for. And personally, I think this works a little better than the Walter Carlos stuff. Uh, because the songs, of the, the compositions chosen, they're, they're nicer to do with the mood. So, uh, yeah, this is a really nice one. Another one that's pretty much the most difficult Moog album I have to listen to. It's uh, A Moog Mass by Caldara. Um, they are uh, reworking Stabat Mata, I think. I, I don't know the story behind that piece, but it's another classical piece. 
uh, where uh, all lyrics are in uh, Latin. That's pretty hard. There's a guy uh, translating the, the lyrics that are going to be sung, going to be represented. He speaks those texts in English. And it's just got crazy sounds, but it's not really that awesome. It's a little odd of it, released on Kama Sutra Records, the label of Love is Beautiful. It's decent, it's nice, but only if you want to collect Moog albums you should pick this up. If you just want some of the best Moog albums, stay away from that. Uh, this is Klaus Wunderlich, Sound 2000. Klaus, uh, as you can see, he's one of those lounge guys uh, that came from Germany and released lots and lots of records in the 60s and 70s, mostly done on organs and with a whole big band behind them. You know, the generic party music of the 60s and 70s, I guess. Uh, this is a Moog album that he did. Maybe his first, I don't know. Anyway, he has two sides on this. He has the, the, the songs that he covers, which are okay, I guess. And then he has a couple of songs, I guess three, that he did himself. They are awesome. Really, really, really great tracks. And he uses the mood synthesizer <coughs> to the best effect of my songs. Well worth it if you can, can, can find it for a little money, for a very a little amount of money. If you have to pay more than like a dollar for it, don't bother because it's not really worth it. Similar artists, except Dutch. This is Joop Stokkemans, who did a lot of uh, uh, TV themes in the 70s. He became pretty famous with that. But this is an album that he did using not a Moog synthesizer, but an ARP synthesizer. And that's this machine. Uh, it's in the Moog section because it works the same as a Moog, it sounds the same as a Moog, except it's an ARP. Uh, same story like with Klaus Wunderly. The covers he does are okay, but the songs he created himself, they are awesome. So there you have it. Kla uh, Job Stokkemans. This is a uh, Phase 4 stereo album on Decca. Uh, Moog by Claude Derringer. This is a decent album, you know. It's pretty okay. There's some really nice covers on here, um, but this is one of those many albums that just consisted of Moog covers. You got Nights in White Satin, Sugar Sugar, Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head, House of the Rising Sun, Venus, Come Together by the Beatles, Bridge on the River, uh, Troubled Water, Lay Lady Lay. It's decent. It's pretty, pretty okay. That's, again, not the greatest Moog album I have, but. This is an album that is really worthwhile. Uh, check it, uh, to, to check it out, you know, go and check it out, please, because it's really nice. Um, it's Dick Hyman at the Mook, uh, and the album is called The Synthesizer. It's a double album. Uh, and it has covers on it, but also original songs. The covers are pretty damn good. Obla Di, Obla Da, uh, Blackbird, Aquarius, Green Onions. Pretty good. But the um, none covered things, they are awesome. They're, they're long, they're crazy, they're different, you know, experimental at times. So, very, mu very uh, worth it to check this out. Uh, if you can find it, pick it up because it's really, really nice. It's on uh, the label that Enoch Light once started, uh, Command, I guess. I guess it's his label. Anyway, good stuff. Then, uh, one of the coolest finds last year in uh, Goodwill stores. I never showed this in an update, and it is one of the coolest. It's Black Mass by Lucifer. Uh, it's, as you can see, the sleeve is in, in horrendous condition. But the album sounds awesome. There's like a little crackle here and there, but I've only paid like, I don't know how much for it, 
two dollars, two euros, right? Um, it's actually not Lucifer that does the music. Uh, it's a guy called Mort Garson who did a lot of Mook albums, Mook stuff. Uh, most of them uh, are concept albums, like this one, which is his satanic Mook album, really. Uh, when I bought it, I thought, this is stoner rock. This is 70s, maybe even 90s stoner rock. Look at that. The lettering, stoner rock. And in the back, devils and demons and stuff. You know. Then I saw Uni, uh, the label. You can see it. There, that's the label. And they did stuff by Strawberry Switchblade. Uh, sorry, Strawberry <laughs> Strawberry Alarm Clock. Strawberry Switchblade are another band. Strawberry Alarm Clock. They did that. So I thought, hey, it's psychedelic. And it kind of is. It's a kind of psychedelic, satanic mood album. Love it. This is awesome. Check it out. You know, great stuff. Then another pretty damn good Mook compilation album. This is Switched on Rock by the Mook Machine. It's got Spinning Wheel, Jumping Jack Flash, uh, Get Back, Time of the Season, Aquarius, uh, Hey Jude, Yummy Yummy Yummy's on it as well. Switched on Rock, Yummy Yummy Yummy. Not really rock, it's bubblegum pop, but never mind. This is another album that is worthwhile seeking out. It's uh, well, well played. Uh, the, the songs, they, they do it a little differently than, than you would expect. It's really nice. Nice album. And, uh, we have one of the most famous pop, uh, uh sorry, Luke tracks. And that's Popcorn. And this is by the band Hot Butter. And, uh, hold tight. You know, sit, sit back. Don't, don't really relax. Just hold your chair, like, because I'm going to show you something scary. This is the band. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my god. Can you imagine those guys rocking out on popcorn? Awesome. The song is, is, is amazing. I love popcorn. It's one of the best pop tracks ever recorded. Um, the other songs uh, on this album, they're pretty good. But the song, Popcorn itself, is astonishing. I love it. I love it so much that I have... A seven inch. This is a seven inch by Hot Butter. There we are. I also have a cover by the Popcorn Makers, which basically is exact the same version as the Hot Butter one. And then I have this one, an Arctic Systems version of Popcorn. And this is my favorite. Why? Because it has lyrics. I cannot sing it <coughs> because I don't understand what the hell he's singing. It's not in French, it's a French guy singing in English and words come out like, like a popcorn all the time, stuff like that. It, it's more gibberish English lyrics that just feature the word popcorn a lot. Really great version. I love this version. This is my favorite version of popcorn. Even though the original wasn't even made by Hot Butter, it was made by well, there's no name on it, but it's Gers Gershon Kingsley. And that's that guy there. It's not even a name on the back. This was basically released to cash in on the popcorn track. Even if the guy, Gershon Kingsley, created it. This is a great, great album. Um, it's got some great cover versions, but it's got some great originals as well. This guy is, uh, you know, one of the giants of the mood world. Uh, album sleeve is terrible. But it's just a great album, so I'm going to keep it. I, I do hope to find the original album someday, and then I can get rid of this. But, uh, yes, it's a great, great album. Um, I mentioned him being one of the giants of, of the mood world. Well, he worked together with the French giant of the MOOC world, and that is Jean-Jacques Perret, or Perry, I don't know. Uh, 
that's them there. This is a great, great album. These guys are just awesome. This is the in sound from way out. Uh, Beastie Boys stole this uh, sleeve for uh, an EP they did, I guess. This is stuff you must seek out. If you want to get started in Mook World, in Mook Music, get stuff by these guys, like this one, or Spotlight on the Mook, Kaleidoscopic Vibrations, which is another really awesome one. This is an original, by the way, on Vanguard. And, and also, you have to find the incredible synthesizer by uh, Jean-Jacques Perret or Perry and uh, Gershon Kingsley. This has a uh, Baroque hoedown on it, which was used or still used as uh, the music in Disneyland, Disney World, uh, Euro Disney, when they have the parade. It's that music. And then, of course, you also have to get solo work by Mr. Jean-Jacques Perry. And this is his classic, Moog Indigo, originally released on Vanguard in 1970. This is a re-release from the 90s. Uh, it's got three remixes by uh, Fatboy Slim. Uh, two of them, sorry, two of them of the track EVA, which is his classic really really great album and then the last album another really awesome al album this is Richard Heyman and it's I have to pronounce it uh, read it correctly uh, Genuine Electric <coughs> sorry Genuine Electric Latin Love Machine and it's got like more you know, Latin type samba music and stuff like that uh, done really really well on the MOOC and as you can see this little robot with the sombrero and his maracas, he's plugged in, and on the back he's taking a little siesta. So awesome record, great sleeve. You know, those are the records. And um, like I say, if you want to delve into uh, the Mook music phenomenon, try out uh, Kingsley uh, or Perret and Kingsley, um, the Lucifer album. That's a really good one. And uh, yeah, of course, Hot Butter popcorn. So this is it. Peace.